he gets a bit sidetracked.
Solomon's service on page 15 in the front of your hymnals will also be projected on the screen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. instead of mourning, 
and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Aliens will shepherd their flocks. Foreigners will work their fields and vineyards. And you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations, and in their riches you will boast. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with the psalm today, Psalm 19. You can find that on page 70 in the front of the hymn. will also be projected on the screen. We'll sing the song again. <laughs>
body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. This is the word of the Lord. The verse of the day, Alleluia. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching, preaching, and healing every disease. Alleluia.
Christ. Fellow saints who cherish His Word that gives us life. People are very visual creatures. It's sort of a very human thing for us to want to sort of see something sort of come in, 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 in three dimensions and, and to turn words in, into a picture or a, or a, 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 a diorama. Something that, that, that shows this, this thing that previously was just words on a page and then all of a sudden it, it comes before you and comes to life. I think about, you, you can read in a, a history book about, uh, about battles and, and generals and, and land changing hands, but then when you can see that, that diorama, when you can sort of see the, the troops and, and see the formations and see the terrain, and it just sort of all comes alive. Or maybe it's seeing your, your favorite novel come to life on the, the big screen. And even though there's there's usually things that at the end of it you're like, well, I didn't really like this about it, and, and, and in my imagination I had pictured something different. There's something sort of neat about seeing the, 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 the cherished words from a novel adapted to the big screen and seeing those words come to life in 3D right before you. Well, in our lesson for today, Jesus shows himself to be God's word standing right in front of them. The fulfillment of God's promises right there in the flesh, standing before him. Come alive. And as he does that, they realize that he is this, this one who was to come. He is this, this anointed one. He's the one that scriptures are talking about. And so he, he points to scripture and then points to himself as the fulfillment of God's promise. Now Jesus goes to the synagogue and, and he, he, he gets up and, and he reads from the scroll of Isaiah. And for us, maybe that's sort of unusual. Maybe that seems sort of odd because we don't just have someone that maybe lived in Helenville 30 years ago and they're in town for the weekend, so why don't we let them read the scripture lessons for church on Sunday? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. They're, they're not a pastor. Why would they read the scripture for when we gather together for worship just because they used to live here? But for, for, for Jesus' time, for, for Jesus' culture, with that, that synagogue worship. They didn't have one particular minister that, that did all of the, the reading and all of the, the preaching. Or any Jewish man who was sort of um, old enough for, for, for you to, to, to actually listen to what they had to say. Someone that, 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 that at least knew what they were talking about, that could read and could express scripture, any one of them could be up for officiating that day at the synagogue. And so Jesus, his custom was when he went into a different town, is he would sort of be the one to read from the scriptures that morning. And with all of this uh, attention that he'd been getting, with the beginning of his ministry and all this power that he's displaying, everyone's fine with him officiating for that morning. The hand of the scroll from the prophet Isaiah. He, he gets up and he reads from the scripture, and then it says that he gave the scroll back and then sat down. And once again, maybe that's odd, because in, in, in our way of doing things, we don't have the, the pastor read from scripture and then and then sit down. But for, for the way they worshiped at the time, you would read from scripture and, and then you sat down. And you delivered the, the, the sermon from a, a raised uh, platform from a seated position. And Jesus began his sermon by saying, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Imagine every ear in the place 
hanging on his every word because they've heard about this Jesus who's from Nazareth, who's been getting all this attention, but they sort of know Jesus from way back. He says that. He says that he is the one who was to come. Jesus was saying that he was that Messiah, that anointed one. That's him. Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. He said a lot. He said a mouthful. What's the content of that message? This, this good news, this, this anointed one, what's he supposed to do? He preaches good news to the poor, proclaims freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. See, his audience us today, all of us, they didn't even realize how spiritually blind and dead they were. They didn't realize that they were spiritual prisoners, that they didn't even realize what the light of the sun looked like, because they've been trapped so long in the darkness. See, their so-called leaders had spent centuries of obscuring the, the good news about the one who was to come. And instead to focus more on, on how you were supposed to observe the Sabbath and how far you could walk and how much of each particular spice that you had to tie to the Lord. All of these things that you had to do in order to get favor with God. And of course, the, the, the religious leaders, they were just a little bit better. They did it a little bit better. Of course, they pleased God a little bit more with their lives. They followed His law and they followed all these extra laws that they added on to God's word. They didn't even realize how spiritually blind, how spiritual prisoners they were. Just like how when you give someone that's perhaps been a long time in, in a dark cave, a dark prison, and then all of a sudden they get brought out into the dazzling sunlight and they can barely stand. The rays of the sun are so bright, their eyes aren't used to it. Jesus is the fulfillment of this Scripture. Jesus is this anointed one. Jesus is the one to preach good news. He's the one to proclaim freedom to these captives and to give sight to these blind, to release them from their spiritual prison, from their spiritual blindness so that they can see what's right in front of them. See their Savior. Now some didn't quite want to hear that message. And we'll see more next week about the reaction of the people of Nazareth to Jesus' message of being the Messiah. And if you have time today or this week and you want to look ahead in, in the Gospel of Luke and see the reaction, it's not good. But for today, we want to stare and, and wonder and, and, and look in amazement at the content of what Jesus was saying. He was saying that he's the anointed one. He was saying that he was the one to come. He was saying that this is God's word standing right in front of them. A fulfillment of the prophecies and promises of their God. The best news that they could receive. That their spiritual blindness would be healed so that they could see their Savior. Sisters, I think sometimes we're tempted to sort of look at God's word and, and maybe take it for granted a little bit. You know, we for, for many of us we have this, this background of being in God's word, and we know God's word so well, and we've had that training, and, and we've we've been in church so much, we know what God's word says. That sort of becomes this this intellectual knowledge, but not really something living and active and powerful in our lives. I wonder if sometimes we don't look at God's word and, and see it as this dried up and, and, and dead piece of paper instead of the word made flesh. 
instead of our Savior, instead of our God, who is the living embodiment of, of God's Word. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Word became flesh and lived among us and taught among us. The Word became flesh and suffered and died among us and for us. Brothers and sisters, we don't have to treat God's Word as this dried up, dead letters on a page that have no bearing on our lives. And yes, maybe they were relevant at a time. Maybe they, they share some spiritual insight, but they're not really relevant to our lives today. But brothers and sisters, the Word became flesh. The Word stood among God's people, showed the fulfillment of God's promises, and showed the love beyond understanding. Jesus said, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. He was pointing to himself as the fulfillment of all of those promises about one who would come and save the children of Israel and the entire world. And he did. Even if people don't always understand exactly what his mission was, even though people sometimes try to make it about this, this physical kingdom and setting up a, a, a new dynasty, but Jesus was about the spiritual healing that can only be found in him. To bind up the broken heart and hearts broken by sin. We have this word. We have God's word that tells us about the word made flesh. And God tells us that his word is powerful and effective, sharper than any double-edged sword. And this living and active word is present in our lives as well. And it's intervening in our lives and it's shaping our lives to give us life. Not just life on this earth. It's true that, that God's powerful, life-shaping word guides us in, in how we should live a life to please our God here on earth. Uh, a sort of life to, to, to show the thankfulness that we have at His forgiveness. But it also gives us eternal life. Because it shows us the one who did away with all of our sin, the one who preached good news to the spiritual poor like you and to me. Let's cling to that precious word. Let's cling to those precious promises. Let's cling to the word made flesh who dwells among us in our hearts through faith. Let's cling to his word and promises as we have in scripture to find plenty of opportunities to hear and to listen and to grow in it, to be strengthened in our lives. Let's place all of our hope for eternal life in God's powerful and living and active word. Personify the word made flesh in Jesus Christ. He is his life. Amen. Please stand. May the peace which transcends all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now join in, in the canticle created as it is projected.
in our trader. January is a good time to take stock of the blessings of the previous year. There's much to celebrate as we appreciate our past and look to the future. Perhaps the most unexpected blessing of 2018 came from Vietnam, where Wells became the first Protestant church body to be sanctioned by the Vietnamese government to provide theological education to the Hmong people in that country. It started with Hmong Christians in Vietnam finding Wells sermons on the internet, and it's led to plans for a Wells Theological Training Center in Hanoi. Again, we're the only Christian church with permission to do this kind of teaching. An amazing blessing. The Vietnamese official said it best when he said, you know, you bring a peace to the Hmong people that we can't enforce on them. And that's through your gospel. And that's a, that's a powerful tool. Our oldest world mission on the Apache Reservation celebrated its 125th anniversary in 2018. At a special event in October, more than 1,200 people attended, evidence of just how deeply the gospel message is appreciated by the Apache people. For 125 years, we've been blessed in this place with the proclamation and preaching of the true word of God, with the message of Jesus, your Savior, with the message of law and gospel. Home missions saw a number of new starts or mission enhancements in 2018. Earlier this year, Wells Connection profiled a new congregation in Reno, Nevada. Similar efforts were started or expanded in places like Bluffton, South Carolina, and Phoenix, Arizona. More than a dozen locations in total. This is the home that I've longed for, my church family. I've searched for a very long time in my life. So, the connection with the people here in our beliefs and uh, is what I believe in. 2018 marked the 25th year of Kids Connection, the monthly video program designed for young people to help them keep connected to their Savior. And that's also the goal of the Wells International Youth Rally, which gathered in Bowling Green, Ohio this past summer. It's the largest assembly of Wells Lutherans anywhere. I just love doing all the workshops and hearing everybody else's point of view on stuff that me and my friends talk about. The 501st anniversary of the Reformation this past fall was an opportunity for congregations to engage in a special mission and ministry <coughs> Sunday opportunity. The centerpiece was the new Wells evangelism film to the ends of the earth. Because of Jesus, God loves you. But how? I'm unworthy. How can I have a life with God? Jesus did everything necessary for you to have life with God as a gift earned by Jesus for you. More than a year after Hurricane Maria struck Puerto Rico, many relief agencies have left the island. But Wells is still very much engaged and will continue to be throughout 2019 as we help rebuild churches, homes, and lives. It's just one of many disaster areas in which Wells Christian Aid and Relief is working to help those in need. I mean, God loved us, and we've got the, you know, the time and the talents that we can actually be able to take some vacation time and use the talents. Despite all the strife in our world, there's much to look forward to in the year ahead. The large classes that are slated to graduate from Martin Luther College and Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary in the next few years will be a great benefit to our churches and schools. And in July, God willing, more than 400 delegates will meet on the Martin Luther College campus for our Synod's 65th Biennial Convention with the theme, For Generations to Come. That theme is a good reminder that the centerpiece of all we do in Wells is preserving and proclaiming the good news of the gospel for this generation and the next and the next until Jesus returns. May God bless our efforts as we begin 2019.
Please help us to cherish the forgiveness that is ours because of your Son. Please accept these our first word offerings and use them to continue to, to spread that word to the ends of the earth. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus Christ, Lord of glory, you delight in making yourself known to us and to others. <clears throat> Bring us to recognize and rejoice in your majesty and your ministry. In love, you chose to exercise your greatest strength to serve us in our greatest need. You revealed the greatness of your glory through humble deeds of love. You revealed your glory through mighty signs and wonders. Assure us that you still rule over all things in the universe and use them to serve our eternal good. In wise compassion, you often exercise your power to help and to heal people with physical and emotional needs. Give us courage and compassion to relieve the distress of the hurting, to pray for all according to their needs, and to be content and cheerful when in your wisdom you ask us to endure hardship. Dear Lord, hear us as we bring to you our private petitions. Preserve your truth among us, and by that truth, preserve us until you appear in dazzling splendor to bring us to the glory of heaven. Let our anticipation of the heavenly kingdom ennoble our thinking and speaking, to enrich our conduct and increase our joy in all aspects of earthly life. Hear us, O light of the Gentiles and glory of Israel. Dear Lord, hear us as we pray the, the prayer that you taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you.
you've seen it at this time, I invite the community the members of St. Peter's Lutheran Church and other community members of other wells and the ELS Lutheran Churches to come forward and receive this time. Come for all things in our <laughs>
sins are forgiven. Amen. <coughs>
Good morning again. Good morning. Welcome to St. Peter's, a special welcome to our guests and visitors this morning. We're glad that you're here. We pray that God gives you opportunities to join us in the future. Um, just a, a couple of announcements uh, for this morning. For one, um, 2018 uh, giving statements are available in the, the mailboxes there um, at the back of church. And the 2019 uh, um, offering envelopes are uh, available on the computer there. So if you haven't picked up either of those two, I'll uh, um, make sure to, to, to do that today. Um, Bible class, uh, Tuesday, uh, the 29th, um, 7 p.m., we're looking at the, the intertestamental period, uh, basically that, that time between Malachi and, and Jesus, 400 years. A um, lot of, uh, lot of uh, events and, 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 and battles and land changing hands and throughout all of this uh, God working um, for, for, for our good shaping the world so that it was ready for the arrival of his son um, so we'll continue that study Tuesday uh, January 29th 7 p.m. Um, seminary food pantry drive the ladies aid are organizing a drive home you have until uh, February 17th so uh, gathering uh, food, uh, gift cards are also acceptable. You could do a, a script from, uh, from school, and then you can actually benefit two, uh, two Christian uh, schools there. Uh, but, but gift cards or food items, please uh, uh, refrain from, uh, from clothing items. No clothing items this particular drive. Um, they kind of have more than they can handle right now um, with, uh, with the clothes. So, uh, but, but gift cards and non-perishable food items, you can bring it to church or school uh, for that. And that's till February um, 17th. Um, I think those are all the uh, announcements uh, that I have. Not seeing any, not seeing any hands. Um, so those are the announcements that I have. May God be with you in this week.